All right, what do we got over here? is awesome, but is it Fred worthy? Let's find out. You can only rely on the pro to do the job with every keystroke satisfying like the millions before it. Quality feel with every key, regardless of your space. Cooler Master Master Keys Pro, take it with you, make it yours. Alright, the 301 is exciting for many reasons, aside from being an extra excellent addition to a very limited category of micro ATX. This one's got four PCI slots, and it's about time we fill the middle gap. So let's see how the $69 301 stacks up as a contender for the best micro ATX enclosure. Let's start with the design first. It's boxy, it's modern, it's got metal and glass, very limited plastic, and the only plastic we find are on case feet, but the bottom dust filter basically sits on top of the case feet, so perhaps Perhaps that was the cheaper uh, version for tooling than going full metal. The dust filter is kind of coarse, which uh, most likely is to minimize airflow restriction because there's very little room underneath it. The overall design formula follows in the footsteps of the N1303 ATX tower, and there is a bit of resemblance to the S340 Elite, so if that's your flavor of a case companion, then Inwin have done a good job. The tempered glass panel is toolless with an excellent mechanism that has a bit of stiffness to it, which I think is by design, and uh, it's just so much easier to remount and now the thumbscrew method seems so 2016. Ew. The handle protrudes a little bit but without taking away from the character and the glass is tinted and it doesn't seem to have any color cast which I prefer over warmer or colder glass and um, there's also this dotted shading on the perimeter that helps to conceal the frame underneath. I really like this touch and we haven't seen this design on glass yet. I have the black and red model, white and blue is also available, so you see the front I.O. is illuminated with dual USB 3, power reset and audio jacks, along with that in wind text in vertical orientation, so it doesn't really look like a logo, instead you can view it as just basic squiggly lines. And since both the front and top are completely covered in metal, the main airflow intake is on the side, which is a bit odd, but I love this ventilation honeycomb design. You could light it up from the inside for this really cool illumination pattern. The side panel is held in with two captive thumb screws and while the design of this ventilation is cool the spacing here is very limited plus there is no dust filter and you guys know how I feel about that on top of that the side airflow entrance is very much blocked on the inside as well you can see this area shares the space with cables it's an odd airflow design and with dual 120 mm fans at the front perhaps the 301 is suited for a radiator with good static pressure fans and so this case has no fans included and you can look at it from Two perspectives. One is because it's in this budget category, it's a shame because at least one exhaust fan in the back here would have been great. But two, I feel like this case is really targeted towards people that might do custom water cooling and you know this micro ATX direction is picking up pace or you are gonna populate your own quality fans in here anyway and so no fans included both negative and the positive. As for the main chamber, it seems to have all the primary elements like a large CPU backplate, uh, an open frame with a plastic cable cover beside the motherboard. The power supply chamber is at the top that is fully closed off aside from uh, having the fan openings and the small cutouts for the cables. So the power supply is an active component for interior cooling. The bottom supports dual 120 mil fans, but unfortunately no cutouts are available right underneath the motherboard, which is the consequence of having the power by chamber at the top while uh, wanting to minimize the height and it's just interesting to see how different the 301 feels from today's expected frame layout. Now I normally don't mention accessories but it is important to mention how they are included so here they're well organized and they're separated in nice baggies but they're not reusable so once you open one bag that's it. How do you store the rest of the little screws and stuff? And this is something that Fantex have been doing for like three years now, ever since their first case, the Enter Primo. These little pouches with separate compartments so you can sort your screws and everything. And I've used these and these are lifesavers when you want to just find the exact screw. And this is so useful down the road when you do multiple builds. 
something companies should definitely start including. For storage, there's a drive cage in front of the power supply. It is removable and accommodates a single three and a half inch drive or an SSD plus two more SSDs at the bottom. And only the ITX motherboard standoffs are pre-installed, but a tool is included to fill the rest. Now, when it comes to the power supply mount, here I have a very large 1200 watt overkill power supply from Be Quiet. Technically, this frame would allow it to sit there and lengthwise it will not interfere with the drive cage, but because of this mounting point where the thumb screw for the side panel sits, you cannot simply insert your power supply this way. You have to angle it in order to mount it inside. So I'm not sure if that's a limitation or not to sort of a limit of very large power supply compatibility, but only 160 millimeter power supplies are supported. All right, so as I start to do cable management, one very disappointing thing came about, and that is the entrance from the top chamber of the cables into the main chamber. Uh, so we have this plastic cover, uh, kind of similar to what we saw on the NZXT S340, but here, the entrance from the back into here is very small. So you have to pass all your cables through here because that is the only opening from the top uh, channel. Uh, unless you want to, of course, route it from, from here where it's, you know, it's kind of open and the cables are not really hidden. But look at this. This is the SATA area. There's nothing there to accommodate your SATA cable pass through. Ah, that's how you do it. Maybe they should have included that in the manual. All right, so by design, you can remove any of these five pieces. And this is plastic so that it helps to channel the airflow into your, you know, the, where the fans are supposed to be. But I didn't realize that you're supposed to actually break, you know, these little pieces so that you can pass your cable through, like the SATA cable into the motherboard area. It would be nice to include this information so that users are aware. And taking all that into account, here's the full build. It's a little bit messy because the main opening is not that large and many of these cables have to cross the motherboard to their final destination, particularly for the USB and the IO cables. So keep that in mind if you're installing the fans at the bottom too. I installed the radiator and then the fans as the tubing at the top would otherwise interfere with that area. So your radiator fans have to be configured in pool setup. It would have been very good to see the power supply shroud to be a little bit more open for cable routing or at least larger cable cutouts, as this was not an easy space to work in. Coming around to the back, it's actually quite simple to just clump your cables in this area uh, and use some of these small cutouts on the motherboard tray for cable type points. And you have to remember though that this is your main intake area. So to keep it as clean as possible is the goal for best airflow. And because the power supply is at the top, be prepared to deal with the thick cable coming from there. Uh, so just maybe come up with some solution to hide it for a cleaner look. And finally, I wanted to see how effective that side ventilation is. And so let's begin with the benchmarks. GPU stressing we're using the furry donut uh, ida64 for the cpu uh, here are our temperatures so we were hovering around 70 degrees celsius on the cpu at load 82 degrees celsius on the gpu uh, i have the 4690k overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz uh, and the gpu is the r9 380x now the thing is the fans here are maxing out so at full speed because uh the temperatures like really went up high so this is your best case scenario now i want to put uh, the fans into their more normal profile like the silent curve and like my custom profile curve so that there's they still do a very good job but they're not super loud because right now the machine is not exactly silent a few moments later here are the temperatures so the cpu uh hovering around 75 to 76. The GPU dropped a degree. I'm not sure why that is. Maybe it's because of the circulation of air is better when there's less airflow coming from the front. You know, it's not as turbulent or something. But um, the system is much quieter, so that's good. But still, what do you guys think of these temperatures? It's a little hot. I would say 5 to 10 degrees, maybe more even. You know, the delta between uh, such a restrictive uh, intake. And well, what can I say? I love the look, the materials and the build. The price point at 69 bucks is just where it should be to remain relevant and not overstep any toes and perhaps incentivize the switch to a micro ATX build. But it's not really optimized for airflow. That is its biggest weakness that will run your components warmer than usual and you just have to accept that but I love this unconventional approach to frame design and we're giving it the Hero Canucks damn good award not because of the temps but on how you'll feel when the system is ready and the only question remains is it Fred worthy So 
So thanks for watching. I'm Dimitri with Hard Knucks. What do you think of the 3 1? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure to subscribe and watch all of our other content, and we'll see you in the next video.